October 5th, National Geographic Channel, Locked Up Abroad. They will be featuring JC from Wrong to Strong. Life story about being in prison in Mexico. So, I had to do craziest things I saw in Mexican prison, part two. Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should've seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know what? Went back to selling, six time failing. I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to give back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never. What's up guys, my name is JC, I am Wrong to Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my team, <laughs> Familia Mi Raza, you already know what time it is. Suetel a Suburban, because we're about to go see Jesus. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Wrong to Strong. All in your name, all in your glory, thank you Jesus. Gotta start the day off with God, straight up. You know, I've been... I've been to a couple prisons in Mexico. I've been to Cerezo San Luis Potosí, Cerezo Saltillo, Cerezo Monterrey Topo Chico, Cerezo Juarez, and Cerezo Las Islas Marias. Uh, a lot of these prisons that I did time at are actually museums now. The Islas Marias is a museum, the, the jail in San Luis is a museum. I don't know about, yeah, Monterrey too. Saltillo and Juarez are still the same. But the stuff that I seen surprised me, to tell you the truth. The number one thing that I got to see a lot in Mexican prisons, and I think I brought this up in one of my other videos, was tunnels. Everybody was trying to dig tunnels. In Mexico, it's allowed to escape. Uh, they believe that every human has that, that want, wants freedom, so it's not against the law to try and escape. They won't add time to you, they won't know, like you're, you're allowed to try, but if they kill you, that's on you. <laughs> so everybody's always trying to find a way to escape and there's been, there's been a lot of uh, escapes in Mexico. I mean, it, it, they just don't put it on the news. I, one of my friends in San Luis Potosí, he built a wooden bed with like a secret compartment and that's how he escaped from that prison uh, and he got out he was one of my really good friends in there he had i think a 20 year sentence so he had been down a couple of years he wasn't going to stay there to do our time he was going to try to escape i always tell people to watch the movie get the gringo with mel gibson because that would give you more of a feeling of what mexican prison used to be in the 90s you know, 80s, uh, it, it was, it was bad, it was bad. And, and the reason why I say it was bad was because there was so much violence in there. There was so much drugs, guns, weapons, drug lords. So there was always something happening. But I got to see some pretty crazy stuff. The tunnels, the tunnels were number one. Everybody was trying to escape. I don't know why it never crossed my mind. Maybe, I don't know but everybody was trying to dig tunnels. Drugs. I never seen such a mass amount of drugs in, in prison. There was eight units. Every unit had uh, the big drug dealer and the small drug dealer. Um, 
And the reason why I know this is because I had credit with everybody. <laughs> I had credit with everybody, so when I would run up my credit on one side, I would go to the other, and then I would go to the other, but there was eight units. I had never seen kilos of cocaine until I landed in Mexican prison. Like, remember, I was 17 years old, and I was mainly dealing with weed when I first started. It was, you know, bringing the weed up from Apacingan into Chicago. And it was that old school Mexican brick weed that was compressed. Most of you guys, if you guys grew up in the 90s, you guys know what I'm talking about. That's what it was. It wasn't until I got to Mexico in prison that I started to see kilos of cocaine with stamps and just different varieties. They liked their cocaine. Guns. You you would think that a prison would keep you safe, but I believe that it was more dangerous inside the prison than it would be outside on the streets. They had guns in there, they had machetes, they had pipes. I mean, when, when the riots would start, I was there for one riot, and it was a riot because they ran out of drugs, and the inmates started going crazy. They started going, it got so crazy, they were beating up people, a lot of stuff was happening that the guards literally had to run in with the bag to give it to the drug dealers so they could start passing them. And it was broad daylight. Drug lords, drug lords going out at night to party and club and then coming back in the morning. Yes, it is true. People have heard these stories, Have people have talked about them. It is true. If you have that kind of money you're coming in and out of prison at night, you're taking care of everybody, but you have to be back. You can't, you can't escape. It, it's one of those things that's like a double-edged sword, like you get to taste freedom, but you have to come back and finish your time. A lot of drug dealers in there enjoy that time because they're still seeing their families, they're still going out at night. It's not like America where they completely take everything away from you. Sex, family, like everything. No, like in Mexico, in prison, you're allowed to have sex with your wife. You have conjugal visits. So it's, it's, it's a very different lifestyle. But if I had to pick where I was going to do my time, honestly, I would pick the United States. I wouldn't pick Mexico. For one, I would run out of money. Two, I don't want to be part of uh, like having to worry about my life, take care of myself or take life or just, it's just, it's just a very, very violent monster world because there's so many drugs, there's so much power, women, there's, there's a lot of bad stuff in the planes. So yes, craziest things I saw in the Mexican prison part two, tunnels. Kilos of cocaine inside prison, guns inside prison, drug lords going out to party at night. And none of this is to glorify none of that lifestyle. I am not glorifying. The only thing I glorify today is Jesus. I walk with the Lord. Yes, it took me 43 years, but I'm happy that it took me that long. Why? I wouldn't be here telling you these stories. I wouldn't be able to get your attention. I wouldn't be able to show, teach you from my experiences. That life is not what a lot of people think it is. Yeah, it's cool when you have the money, but there's a lot of things that you have to do to get to that point that makes you lose yourself, lose your soul. I hope that my videos, I hope that my message, I hope that my whole social media platform can help somebody see that that's not the life you should live.